Mac T here and of course we're going to go over how to check your EVAP purge valve. Yes, um, I got a new one. I got a one that is working in my car. It works, but I'm going to change it out. Okay, uh, but I'm going to show you a few tests and things we can do to see if it is working properly. One, what DTCs? I have it un, un uh, connected right now and I'm trying to set a DTC, a, you know, a code that will bring a check engine light and all this other stuff, but so far no luck. I haven't done a drive cycle with it disconnected, but uh, there is a vacuum test that you want to check on it. Of course, it's like, a, I forget the actual codes on them. It's like a 442, 443, P442, P443 code that you're going to see uh, if you're having that problem. Uh, but this purge valve could send that. It could be a small leak or a big leak. Depends on what's going on. But uh, it's a real simple thing to replace. And it could cause problems with the starting of your edge. Okay, you fill it up with gas, go to start. Again, it can cause either a lean or a rich environment where the car don't start. Because after all, this purge valve takes the pressure and the fumes from the gas tank and it feeds it into your intake. And again, if it's stuck open, it's sucking in all sorts of air, it could lean it out or whatever the case may be. And then of course your edge won't start. So it could be other things too, but it seems here lately, the purge valves have uh, been failing in a way. So I thought why not do a little bit of video on it and of course show you how to replace it. And I'll do a quick test on how it works. But right now I got it disconnected. My edge is running. And I want you to hear what an actual working purge valve sounds like that is in good shape. Now you guys can hear this, hear it popping. Hear that noise, that pumping sound. Put my thumb over it and then it stops. Now it's going to be running while the edge is in operation. But once you take and turn the key off, that suction, that vacuum will go away because it will seal. Now if the valve is working and there's no power to it, it will close off and it should form a vacuum. So I'm going to perform a vacuum test on it to show you what a good one looks like. And if it does leak, then that tells you, of course, it's bad. But again, you can hear that. You can hear that suck in the air. And of course, this is the tube right here that goes over that. And it ha I broke this one, so I've had it on there with a zip tie. Uh, it's real simple since it forms a vacuum you just need to zip tie it on and I'll show you at the end how to do that But first we're going to go ahead and we're going to check a few other things on here And I'm going to turn the engine off and I'm also going to check and see if I have any codes But that is your purge valve right here. It's a real simple part and we'll go ahead and replace it Now the PCM controls the purge valve and of course you would have a uh, P code on this like I said uh, but I have no code that is being set right now. So I'm going to try to drive it around the block and see if I can get a code to set. And then, of course, I'll be uh, back to see if we can get something going on this. And this is with the purge valve is off and disconnected. So I got some traction control stuff showing up. And, of course, I ain't got my seatbelt on, but I do have traction control. Uh, that is essentially saying off uh, that is what I'm getting a reading on on my dash so with the purge valve off apparently you get traction control uh, situations going on so there we go and we got that so it told me that I had to check something there wasn't quite sure what that was I'll have to review that but uh, that was another indication it comes on when the uh, purge valve is not connected. Uh, it's electronically connected, but the hose is disconnected. So that is something that uh, you will know. Then traction control lights, of course, can turned off. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we got any codes. Now again, on my uh, foreskin, I'm not receiving anything as far as a PCM or any other codes other than my standard control module here for that but uh, not uh, not seeing anything 
nothing's popping up so let's go ahead and work on this valve and to check it to make sure it doesn't have any vacuum leaks and then go ahead and replace it uh basically what we got to do here is just push down in this back tab and then we just pull this out this electrical connector just pulls right out of there and then of course we go back here and we release the uh top two bolts here that are on there they're just eight millimeters is all they are and then we just unscrew the bolts be careful not to lose them you don't want to lose these could be a bad day but we take this purge valve out and then we're going to do some testing on it we can do a vacuum test on it to make sure it's functional uh, if it is leaking when it's po no power to it uh, that'll tell you it's bad so let me grab these nuts here so I don't lose them or bolts rather and then of course you just pop it right out and that's all it is folks that is all there is to it and of course we're gonna go ahead and do a test on this uh, it's a two wire so not much to it just a little open and close power control that's all it is so uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get it all checked out here and we're gonna install a new one and I'll show you what that is I got my uh, little parts pieces here I jam this tip into the uh, valve end here and we're gonna put the mighty vac on this end and basically we're gonna test for a vacuum so what we're gonna do is go ahead and pump this thing up and see if we got a vacuum that we can hold on it and of course gotta account for some leakage and everything on here but it looks like it is holding pretty steady so again uh, it is in good shape as you can see at holding at about five six seven psi so apparently that's a that's a good hold for it and again it's not a real big valve but we'll go ahead and test a new one and see what it's doing but again this is a hundred and seventy thousand miles on this one and it's still functioning so uh, as you can see it says right there in the air to the can okay so that is where we're gonna go but again it's holding it is leaking slightly it is going down slightly so it might account for some leakage through uh, my mighty vac here but we'll go ahead and uh, test the new one now I just give you the part number here this is what it is okay and if you buy it from the dealer you'll spend about 43 bucks including tax uh, if you buy it online you should be able to get it for like mid 20s 30s somewhere around there so uh, you can buy these uh, online through Amazon eBay and everybody else uh, but this is the part number here just in case you all want to know it but we'll go ahead and open this one up and test it before we install it make sure it does seal uh, and see if a new one has a better seal on it than the old one so nothing to get in the way there so we just take and we just shove that in there nice and tight and then again we're gonna pump it up well folks look at that look at that okay I'm gonna redo this test and uh, this is something I wasn't expecting this thing is holding tight uh, maybe I didn't have it tight enough on the other one but it's holding it right up in there and it's not leaking okay so uh, I'm gonna release this and I'm gonna retest this uh, old one here maybe I did need a new one folks maybe I did need a new one look at that this one won't go up as high okay folks I guess you can say that this uh, purge valve is failing okay uh, surprising it is surprising me um, hey wow okay anyway I guess I did need a new purge valve amazingly enough uh, maybe this is a just-in-time fix so uh, yeah this one's dropping down to seven that one was holding at well over 20 
So we're going to say this purge valve here at 170,000 miles has or is failing. So uh, basically, I am doing this change just in time. So discovery. Okay, so we all know. But that was a simple test, and that tells you the vacuum on it was not working right. So I'm going to go ahead and install this new one, knowing that I needed it. Oh, folks, this is surprising. I did not know that my purge valve was failing. That is, that is surprising me. That is very surprising to me. I did not know that. Um, wow. guess I uh, was under the belief that it was working good. And then I determined that it is not. So uh, thanks to all the viewers who are requesting this. Uh, you definitely uh, found out I had one failing. Uh, that is amazing. I was not expecting that. So anyway, uh, we're going ahead and uh, getting this tightened back up. And again, it's nice and loose. So can't quite get my fingers in there. There we go. Uh, this is one thing you probably don't want to be using power tools on. So we'll just try to get it tightened up in there as much as possible. Uh, eight millimeter again. But, wow. Here I thought, you know, I'm driving along thinking I'm doing good. And in all actuality, my purge valve is shot. So let's go ahead and get that snug. Then we're going to go ahead and put this uh, clip back on there and then put this uh, purge valve back on. We're going to start the edge up and, of course, check her out now. Now, as you can tell, I got the sound. I got the vacuum on here and the uh, traction control light is off. Uh, Braking system light, everything's off. There's no DTCs that were ever set when I had it disconnected. Uh, the suction on it is every everything is good. Uh, so purge valve is replaced uh, again. I'm quite shocked. I was not expecting it to be failed. But I got a zip tie here, and basically all you're going to do is find a place to actually uh, run the zip tie back through, and it's pretty simple. You just run it back through here. Sorry, my arm's in the way, but there's not a lot of room. Uh, but we get this thing back in here, and we want to loop it around to hold the hose. Easier said than done, apparently. Uh, I gotta have my hands here. But we just take and we uh, feed this then back through this zip tie, just like so. And then, of course, we just pull it tight, just enough. You don't want to get real tight, but snug. Just enough to hold that tube in place. And that's all it's going to do, is just hold it in place. And uh, because it does form a suction. But that's pretty much it, folks. Uh, I'm not going to trim it off, because quite frankly, it's not in the way for anything. But that's how I held it on for 80,000 miles, and that's how I'm going to hold it on now. But uh, again, that's how you change your purge valve out. Well, beat me with a stick, okay? Uh, I was surprised. I did not know that my purge valve was going bad. I didn't have any code set, so, you know, I guess you could say this is a just-in-time fix. Uh, I was pretty well convinced in my own mind that my purge valve didn't need to be replaced. But as it turns out, you saw through the Mighty Vac, there is definitely a leak in my purge valve. Uh, it was only holding about 7 PSI. It was not performing like it's supposed to. So I would honestly say that it was only a matter of time before that purge valve failed. Now I got a brand new one in there, and that makes me want to check my wife's edge now. Okay? So, uh, hey, just in time save. I thank the viewers who are requesting me to do a purge valve video. Uh, you saved me. From a dead stop thank you so much uh, again got it fixed sorry about the codes didn't set any codes all the traction control and the emergency braking system seem to be popping up because of the purge valve now keep in mind that that PCM does detect everything and uh, it tr sometimes translates it to drivability issues which you know would stand a reason because 
if the fuel system ain't working, it goes to the powertrain, and if the powertrain can't function right because it ain't getting enough fuel, then all sorts of wacky things will happen to you. So uh, again, uh, you know, that's a simple way with the Mighty Vac to check if your purge valve is working. It takes a few minutes, simple, simple check, folks, uh, and then you can be rest assured whether it's working or not. You don't even have to disconnect it. Uh, just disconnect the hose, put a vacuum on it. If it's not reading right like mine was, then just go buy a new one, replace it. So anyway, we got this repaired. And of course, as with all things, my feet hit the floor today and I'm having a great day. And I want you to have a great day too. And of course, remember, go over here to that Facebook page. Of course, join up and meet me and uh, Manoran and all the others that are administrators in there, uh, Elhard and uh, uh, Roger and of course uh, uh, Saddam and uh, we all have a good time so we want you all to uh, of course ask questions we're there to help hey it costs you so much money to join right I, I think last time I checked it was zero okay so uh, by all means do that and of course by all means subscribe to the, the YT that's right jump on that YT hit the subscribe button and see these videos when I put them out and with that being said, we got Mercy Grow who's going to, you know, she's going to throw a couple one-liners at you along with this fine music that's going to play while she's talking to you. Anyway, have a great day. Thank you for watching MacP's videos and remember to like and subscribe.